can know and welcome to Happy Thinking. So we're going to go through a couple things. We're first going to go down the line, introduce ourselves. We're going to talk about what we do, how we got into the business, uh, and then our our biggest struggle that we find as a small business owner, over, especially with crafting. So people. So hi, my name is Nicole Ellison. Uh, I make, as I have an example here, I make the things out of crochet, and I also do small um, sort of cosplay type items, like wands and scars and things of that nature. But mostly I deal with yarn in general arts and media. Uh, I got into it because uh, I've been in the arts my whole life. I have a degree actually in studio art, that's where I originated in. And I used to love to make things for my friends and family, and they'd always get on me, oh, Nicole, these are so cool. Why don't you sell these? Why don't you make these go for public? No one wants to buy this stuff. So then um, I met Tony in a craft spot that we did, and she was like, hey, Nicole, I love your stuff. I think our stuff compliments. Do you want to try doing conventions with me? And I'm like, well, my family does get on me. Maybe I can give that a try. Uh, so we did one together, and it was a lot of fun, and I got great feedback from people, and I love doing it, and I keep doing well at it. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, probably the struggle that I deal with um, the most. Oh, we talked about this last night. Now I'm drawing a blank on it. Yes, I have a lot of people that come up to me because my dolls are really unique, and they're also very tiny and cute, which is what I aim for. And so I have a lot of people come up. Oh, I love your stuff. Can I have a pattern for that? And I'm like, no. And there's two main reasons for this. One is because, unfortunately, not everyone is decent and honest and they don't just want to make it for themselves. They want just the easy route. They want to be able to copy what I've done and they want to also be able to sell it because they see I can do it. So obviously it's easy if everybody can do it and that's really not the case. And it's kind of insulting since, you know, I've spent hours designing my stuff, working out all the kinks in my pattern, so I don't do that. And then on the other hand, it also violates copyright law, which we'll get into more later, but um, there's a very fine line that you have in this business, and having the patterns available for something like that definitely puts you over the line, and if you have your stuff up on Etsy or any sort of online store, you can get um, sued or pursued for legal action for doing this. Well, I'm Donna. Uh, my job, or my name is Amy. I specialize in eating and eating. Let's do it. And I too bombed at the first Magfest. 
And we did a second convention, and I bombed there too. But I said, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going. And Tony is great. She's very supportive, and she's very good at suggesting things about, hey, this is what you can do to make it better. So, um, you know, the third Magfest, which is this year, that was my, that was my third time as a charm. It was good. It's a great feeling. So, but as far as problems for me, mine is time management. I'm very bad at making sure I get my stuff done in a timely fashion. Share your mind. That's quite a um, Hi, I'm Liz Reed. Uh, I have a web comment called Tuttles and Rage. And the thing that makes the web comment a little bit different is that it's mixed media. So we actually do drawn comics and also sculpted dioramas. Um, and the reason why we got into it is because we were kind of doing like our nine to five day job. So when I say being my husband, um, and uh, we just decided that we wanted to be creative and like we, um, we work in the um, television industry and we weren't able to kind of like seek out that storytelling element that we wanted to get into. So he said like why don't we just you know start writing stories and just put them online. You just have to start doing it. And so we actually started a Tumblr page and just did like these pencil sketches of these jokes that didn't make any sense but they made each other laugh. And um, now we've been doing it for four years, and I've thrown into like doing gallery shows, like having our own store, um, and basically making it like you know it's our own business now. Um, and so I think the hardest thing, especially when starting out, um, is pricing and making sure that when you make something, it actually is like the value of the cost to make it, and also the time you put into it. And that's really hard because, you know, for me, like, I love sculpting and I love drawing and writing so much that it doesn't feel like work. And so to put an actual price to it, it almost feels like, I don't know, but I had fun doing it. I'm so used to, like, getting paid for stuff you don't have that much fun doing. So, um, yeah, I think that's, that's something that we've gotten better at and it just takes time, but that would definitely be my biggest struggle. So, I think I'm going to tell you a little cheerleader. Have it up. <laughs> and I'm Tony. I am a quilter, so I am a quiltoni. If you walk through the convention, you may have seen my quilts hanging up in places. I also had the quilt in the, um, the charity auction, which I ran, and I try, I try to do that a lot with the charity work. It's the reason how I got into it is I went through a very long divorce, and I found myself with nothing to do. And I'm sitting at home. I, all of my friends are married with children. I had no children. A single friend, I had nothing to do. And I'm like, I can't do this. I need a hobby. So I went online and I look at Joanne's and I said, oh, they have all these great classes I can take. I can learn how to crochet or knit or quilt. Hmm. So I went online and I researched them and I saw a Mario quilt that someone had made. And I went, I want to quilt. That is really cool. So I learned how to quilt and I actually gave away a lot of my quilts. I uh, did a lot of that, and then I had someone email me and said, hey, I, can I buy one of your quilts? You want to buy something out of me? Okay. So I started selling them to friends and family, people who actually wanted to buy them, and then Mark, who runs the Baltimore Comic Con, actually sent me a message that said, hey, so do um, you want to actually try to come to the convention and display them and sell them? Okay, sure. So I went to that first convention with three quilts, and I sold all three. And I just went, I, I can do this. I can make a business out of this and I can do this. And it's a very long and hard struggle when you're first getting started, especially when you want to start selling things. And that's the biggest thing that I have. My biggest struggle though is paying myself. So along with Liz was saying, with the price points, my material, unlike a lot of crafting, is very, very expensive. Especially because I live in Canada, where the fabric is almost twice the cost. So if I were to price it and pay myself at least minimum wage, no one would buy it because it's now out of their price range. So that's my biggest struggle: is trying to find something that will offset that. Either small things, like I sell the iron-on patches, and I sell pillows, and I get a much better price point. I actually, pay myself minimum wage with those things. So it allows me to do the quilting, which I absolutely love doing, and I do that just for the sake of it. So, and which leads us then to the next thing we're going to talk about is craft hackers. So 
the four of us, and I remember I keep telling Liz about it, but uh, Nicole, Dana, and Donna, and I are actually, as of tomorrow, launching a new site called Pathfinders, where we are going to be help, showcasing awesome crafts from around the world. So not just geeky crafts, but just awesome crafting, because we believe, and Liz believes this too, that if we want people to buy handmade, we want people to support artists. We, we just want that community of love, and we want to put it out there. So we're going to start showcasing all of these awesome crafts. Uh, that's the first half. And the second half is if you are a crafter and you want to grow your business or start your business, we have a membership that we actually will help you. We'll hold your hand, and we will take care of you. We'll show you what to do. So that's the craft factors, and we have a couple of topics that we have in mind, but before we do any of that, we wanted to open it up for questions. So if anyone has any questions about crafting in general, about business, about anything at all, we're here for you. Yes, sir? How did you make that connection? Uh, Liz, you I'm sorry, how did I make that connection? The uh, connection with uh, Baltimore. Oh, with Mark? Yeah. I actually, I was friends with someone, that were one of his employees. So I actually was friends with one of the employees that was talking to him about, oh my gosh, you know, my friend is kind of doing this. And he said, well, why isn't she selling a pawn? She's, um, I don't know, ask her. So that's how I got that connection. That was actually my very first convention was the Baltimore Comic Con almost four years ago. I think that's like a key part of it too, is um, just like once you start talking to somebody about like what you're interested in your craft, then that's another person that you can network with. I mean, I definitely think that like with all of us, like we all, well, I met everybody through conventions. And so um, if you make something, if you do something, you go to somebody's table and it's like really similar, like just start a conversation with them. Like I know for me, um, when I meet another sculptor or another writer, like I'm always like, I wanna see your site, show it to me. And then, you know, if it's something that connects with me, then I'll post about it. I mean, it's that thing where it's not just, I think the great thing about like the community um, that Tony's creating with Craft Hacker is just um, that's exactly how you have to like build up your audience and like realize that like you're sharing the experience with people. It's not just about you putting your product out, it's about being part of an actual community. Yeah. I actually made sure this morning whenever before it opened to the public, I actually walked around and I spoke to every single crafter that I saw that was out there and I gave them my card. Because that's what you do. You have to build the community. You've got to you got to network, and that's one of the biggest keys. Yeah, and I think in part of that is um, when you do this type of stuff, and you really only have like your friends and family that you're talking to. Even with as big as the internet is, sometimes you feel like you're the only person that does this. You're the only person that like has maybe tried this. And yeah, you see some pictures online and stuff, but it's like there's nothing out there that's really like you know you can either do this as a business or that you know you can find support and encouragement in the things that you do because that can go a huge, huge way to helping you really pursue something that you love to do and something you would have a passion for is having that support in that community. So that's another reason why I love this and that's another reason why networking and talking to people at these conventions is so important is because it really helps not only you get encouragement that the things you're doing are valid and that they're important, but also that you know you're helping other people as well. So it's a really great cycle. Good question, sir. Um, as an approximate percentage, how much of your income is crafting over there? Not one percent. Yeah. <laughs> so I I can start. I actually um, zero percent. I actually don't make any money right now. I make zero money. I actually, for the last two years, even though I, I filed taxes as a business, I've taken a loss. And the big reason for that is the cost of hotels, cost of convention, cost of the, the biggest cost. But I have a five-year plan, and it's, that's the another thing too, is it's important, and that's what I'm gonna actually sit down with Donna and Dana about as their next step, is putting everything on paper, doing a full business plan. What is your plan? What is your cost? And actually going forward. And I actually sat and did mine a couple of months ago, and, and I have a plan. So my plan in in the next two years is to quit my day job. My boss hopefully won't see this. And to um, and this is what I'm doing full time. At. I'm hoping to travel to all around Canada, both Canada and the U.S., with craft crafters helping other crafters and showcasing my books. So. And I, I know for me, like, I actually, um, I think, you know, the thing is, like, everybody has, like, this secret identity, 
Where it's like, you know, by day, I'm an accountant, by night, it's like, you're not an accountant, are you? No. Because I was like, I make amazing quilts. <laughs> no, I am <laughs> the manager at Michael's. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so for me, like, um, I actually put in my notice with my day job because um, with the comic, um, I can't tell you an exact percentage, but I think what happens with most people is like now it's grown so much that I can't do both. Like I'm working two jobs and I think you have to make a decision where it's like, okay, well if you want to grow your craft, like there's a point where you have to make it full time and then that's when you're going to start like making it like your actual business because right now it's just a small business for me. And I do make money on the side, but you know, in order to make it like my full time salary, um, that needs to change. So um, I, I think for most people, when you, when you talk to them, they kind of reach a point where they figure out what they can sacrifice in their life. Like for me, you know, no more lattes. <laughs> but then, you know, it's, it's for a good cause that I know eventually with the business plan, you know, I'll grow down the line. But I think it's, um, I think it's something that you have to figure out for yourself. Because I don't know if you guys have ever read the book um, Steal Like an Artist by Austin Kleon. I suggest, yeah, you go, girl. Uh, you totally read that because I think that um, with that, book, it, it gives you like a key piece of advice, which is do your art, but don't quit your day job. Because for me, the longest time, like my day job, which I enjoy doing, like that's what paid me for my art so I could go out and do it. And so I kind of figured out what I was doing and making good quality stuff that I could sell to others. So I think definitely if there's anything you can do is buy that book right away and read it. It's really short and quick and like to the point. I know uh, for Don and I, we're fairly new to this. We, this is our fourth Yeah, this is our fourth convention. So um, we're still figuring it out. And I know personally that I'm not really making any money for me personally yet. Um, any money that I do make as, uh, aside from breaking even at a convention um, goes straight back into buying supplies for what I make. Uh, and that's the biggest thing. Is you have to be able to realize, you're like, yes, I made a profit, but I need to make sure I have that money so I can get the stuff I need to do it again. Yeah, definitely. And a lot of times, like, I have made profit, but I don't go and say, oh, I'm going to buy a new computer. No, I, I put it in supplies. I also put it into the cost for renting a table at a convention, the cost for the hotel, for my gas, for my food. So it's not, we haven't made a profit yet because we're putting it into the business to grow it. So, and that's one great thing about Tony and Craft Hackers is she's helped us grow. She's helped us perfect our craft so that we are selling better and that we are able to market better. So. Yeah, and I'm going to agree with Liz. I'm at the same point with her. I totally agree. My um, day job, my alter ego, as she put it, <laughs> uh, I had one that really um, allowed me to get away with more time crafting than uh, most people do with a typical business. And uh, for the last few years, I've been a full-time nanny for a family. And I only have one little boy that I'm watching, a really great kid, but I have nap time. <laughs> so when he's napping for two hours, I'm not doing anything. So it was kind of a nice little bonus because I'm getting paid to craft at the same time for a couple hours a day, which is great. Um, but he's gotten older now and that's gotten cut short, so it's really made it hard. But it has really cut into then my time when I be at home because like I get home and it's like, okay, and now from like, you know, 6 o'clock until 10, 11 o'clock at night, I'm crafting. And yeah, I have to like have dinner and I try and make that short. And but then he's like, oh, Nicole, we never see you anymore. It's like, I'm sorry, guys, my convention is in a month. And I have stuff I have to do. Um, and then it'd be the same thing on the weekends. I mean, right after a convention, I was telling my friends, okay, this is when I have all the time. You want to do something on the weekend? Do it now. Because, like, within the six week mark of a convention, I am unavailable on weekends. So, yeah, that's a really big point. You really have to figure out in order to grow your business for something like this, how dedicated you are to it. I mean, is it just a hobby for you? Is this something you just want to do on the side to supplement, like, if you can make enough, a sort of, like, a fun income. It's like, oh, I just want to buy these things. I'm going to do this on the side. But as she was saying, there's really a lot more cost that goes into it than I think most people realize. So you really have to decide how dedicated you are. And if you're going to do that, are you willing to make the push to do it? So much like Liz did, I actually um, I only have two weeks left at that job, and I'm going to be going full time supporting my craft hackers and actually full time um, with my crafting business as well. So it's going to be kind of a sink or swim summer for me. This is really going to be my test if can I do this? Can I make this my full time job? Can I do this thing I'm passionate about all the time? So I get to be getting paid, guys. Yes. Fun times. I think a good thing too is I don't know if we're going to touch on it, but like get an accountant. 
like because yes. like with your business, like you can write a lot of stuff off. So yeah. um, that's what's really Keep all your that. receipts. Yeah, and the, along that line too is um, the great thing about having a good business is I can write out any time I take my sewing machine and have it clean. That's a write off. Anytime I need to go buy some bread, that's a write off. But the government looks at your your practice business. If you take a loss three years in a row, yeah. you are no longer a business. You are a hobby and you now have to go and pay all those taxes back. Right. So it's something where if you're just getting into it, you may not want to declare it as a business and write it not yet until you know that you're going to make a profit at least once every three years. So that's that's something to keep in mind too if you're thinking about taxes. Yeah, like for us, like oh sorry, no, totally good question. Um, so for us, we've been doing the comic for four years, and um, we just wrote off our stuff last year. So we waited three years to make sure that this was something that we were into before we took that next step. So, so for those of you who are um, who have business partners, which is you two, and I think it sounds like some of you all others, um, how is that partnership? It sounds like it's primarily like a business or financial sort of partnership. But how has that impacted you creatively in terms of what you make or your skills you develop? I don't know you two talk in the two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think for us, like it really hasn't impacted us except for table space. Like yeah. we, <laughs> we realized so that, that we realized that at this convention that it's time for us to expand. Um, the reason we started doing this together is because we both knew we couldn't afford to get one table by ourselves. So we decided to split the cost of the table. But she her curler beads are out, I mean they're crazy. You have so many now, and she makes these beautiful paintings. And so we've got this big stuff and it takes up space. And then I made these giant pillows and it's like, oh no, what are we going to do at this convention? So, and then I'm also planning on, ex on expanding with, with like articles of clothing. And so we, we definitely have to work on making sure we have enough space. Um, but as far as creatively, we, we both work in different mediums, really. She does her curler beads and the paintings. And I mostly work with fabric and I do a few pieces of jewelry here and there. And it's so. nice to have a partner too, because you can say, well, I'm thinking about making this. What do you think? And yes. it's like, it's either going to be a good idea or maybe you should do this instead. So it's nice to have that collaboration so that you can really go the right way instead of just kind of being by yourself going, is this going to work? Is this not going to work? Yeah. And it's, it's also nice to have kind of that built in support. Um, Don and I have known each other since high school. And so it, I was like, I know this is somebody I can trust. And she is amazing because I'm terrible at math. And she usually has to count how my cash score because I get frustrated. Um, it happened at AppFest. I was trying to do it. I was like, I can't figure this out. And I was, just, I was, I was done with it. Um, but we also have um, her husband and my soon-to-be husband. We drag them along. They carry heavy stuff. And they are currently getting the table by themselves right now. Yeah, so, that's 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 my husband is at our table, so that's, that's a great so. thing. Get someone that can wash your table when you need to and yeah. can bring stuff Which is nice yeah. to have a partner, especially if you're sharing a table, because she says, I need to go to the bathroom. I'm like, all right, I got this. You go do your thing. So it's great. Um, yeah, I, like I mentioned before, um, unlike them, where they've been friends, like I, I can trust them. Tony and I did not know each other for anything. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we actually met on the site Spread Stitch, yes. which is a, it's actually a worldwide site where people go on and they cross stitch little video game things. Yes. And there was a swap on there, and, and I had to at me. that point, at that time, we lived five minutes apart. Five minutes apart. I'm not even going to buy all this, I'm going to drop it on her house. <laughs> yeah. So it, it, we had no clue, and then I just love her stuff so much. And I, I, at the first convention at the Baltimore Comic Con, I was actually very nervous, and I wasn't sure how I was going to be receptive. So I actually reached out to her and I said, "Look, I know these big, huge price point things can I can take some of your dolls, and I'll mark them up a few dollars, and then if they sell, I'll keep those few dollars and I'll give you what you asked for." Is that okay? Let's do them on as a basis. And yeah, because I was a lot more busy with my full time job at the time, and I was like, I, I have no time to fit this into my life right now. So I mean, I can't, right. you know, go with you to these things. I, I don't have the type of notice for it. Um, and then, but, but then we built the relationship, and mm -hmm. in years we became just very, very, very good friends because we have this we, we, this connection. As we got to know more about each other, we were just astounded at the weird things we had in common. Yes. Like at the time when we met, we were both dating Canadians. Randomly, it was like of all things, and we both met them playing through MMO games. games online, and we're like, "This is very strange." Yes. And I don't know if I'm happy about these coincidences or creeped out by them. And the thing that we have found at conventions is that our things complement each other because she's all yarn and I'm all fabric, and she has very low price points. I have very high price points. 
So when people come to retrieval and they're looking for high price point items, fantastic, I can take care of it. If they're looking for low price points, Nicole can take care of it. So that's the biggest thing. So if you share a table with someone, um, it's you have to complement each other and you have to make sure your things aren't going to compete. Yeah, so that's someone, really important. If someone comes to your table, I see at conventions sometimes where two people are sharing a table and their things are alike. And now they're they're competing against that dollar against each other, and that's not a good right. thing. I have a good story about my sister. She um, eventually she got she went into fashion. She had a degree in fashion, but she and her friend um, used to, um, did Oticon together one year, and they are both artists. They both have different art styles, and they decided to share a table because, like we said, costs can get really expensive. So they share a table, and my sister, she's been to Oticon plenty of times, she's very excited to be there. Hi, how are you? Talking to people, she's got it all displayed. But her friend was just kind of sitting there, very intimidated by it, didn't know how to talk to people, and then no one was coming and buying her stuff, and she just kept being more miserable and miserable. It's like, well, why do they like your stuff? Why is your art selling better than mine? And that's just like, part of that was just her attitude. You know, she went into it being very like, no one's coming over, I've been here for an hour, why has anyone bought anything? No one buys anything in the first hour. I yeah, that's it. <laughs> so if you ever do a convention, if you don't sell anything on Friday, yeah. and I kept telling them all the time, yeah. if you sell nothing on Friday, it's okay. Yeah. People aren't going to buy things on Fridays. Yeah. <laughs> Usually the first day of a convention, everybody's running the sweep of the room. They're yeah. like, what's here? Yeah. And so, then yeah, the if, you're, if you're coming on Friday, you're going to be there the whole weekend. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. every convention for a good goer knows you buy on Saturday if it's the last thing, or you buy Sunday if there's a whole bunch of things. Yeah. So. So, um, Never be offended if someone comes by your table and they're like, I love your stuff, but I'm just looking for right now and we'll be back. Yeah. It's like, cool, and here's my card. Write down the thing you like. Yeah. So when you look at these, because let's be honest, you all get a ton of business cards at the convention. And you're going to go look at them later and you're like, who is this person? I don't know. And uh, what was this one? Uh, I think they made this thing, but if you write that note on the back, or you encourage the person who came by to write that, it's like, oh, well, I really liked the Venom doll that you made, or I really love that ruby pillow that this person made. Give them a pen, have them write it on there, so they're looking at it, it's like, oh, that's why they made this. I totally want to swing by that person, and that's all they need to usually bring that return sale and come back to your table. But to venture back to the original one, yeah, it's not really important that. not to be competitive with someone. So while you might both be like, oh, we both love to draw, or oh, I, we both love to crochet, or well, I crochet, I knit. When it's that similar, while well, either you might be good friends, you will quickly be competitive. <coughs> yes. Of course, it will begin, even yes. just in your minds. Yeah, so my partner is my husband, so we can't be enemies. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, I think for us, I mean, it, we're, it's a little different because we do the comic together. Um, but I guess like something that um, we share is just making sure, like everybody else said, like making sure your ideas work with each other and that you have somebody to like bounce them off of. But I think also at the same time, like kind of to touch on like working at a table, it's so nice to have somebody else there to keep your energy up. Because yeah, it's easy to kind of look like you're like sloshed to the chair and like don't want to talk to somebody. And like earlier, I was like checking my DS for my street passes to like see who like I came across. <laughs> you know? Yeah, man, you got to. It's good stuff. I know. Um, but yeah, I think it's good. When you have a party really for a partner or there's something that you're interested in, make sure that they have good energy that matches with your energy because um, it really does make a huge difference in terms of like keeping your motivation going. Um, and also making sure like they're honest but they're not destructive with your ideas because you want somebody who's going to give you like creative criticism but also like build on what you're trying to do. Yeah, and that's one of the things. One criticism, I mean, it, it, it can be really hard to get criticism for the first time in anything you're doing like this with like art of any form, whether it's writing or drawing or, you know, crafting or sculpting or anything. Criticism can be the worst because you put so much personal energy into something, but that's why it's also the most conductive because that criticism, when it's coming from an honest person who means the best for you, all they want is for you to be the best at what you can be. And that's really important to find someone that will give you that sort of advice. Okay, any other questions? Yes, you. Uh, hi, I'm really young, but I've been doing my craft for a really long time. And I was wondering what would be the best way to get the word out on a really small business? It's not quite con level, but. Right. Yeah, so that's actually a really good question. And a, when it comes to crafting, age doesn't make a difference at all. My stepdaughter actually makes little tiny clay figures. So she makes earrings and, and pendants and braces. And I think they're pretty but of course, you might have a little bit of yeah, so. <laughs> it's, um, so it doesn't make a difference to age. The biggest thing you have to do is you have to have a website. You have to have social media. 
So new website, DeviantArt at C, so Etsy store is fantastic. Um, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest. It's 